Okay, so the first thing I noticed when I'm looking at this one is that I have a huge circle that has a diameter of 6.5. So that's what's going to represent the outside of this. The things that we see on the inside, we have a hole with a diameter of 1 inch, 1.75. And then we have a keyway that's also located on this one. We also see that we have some angles that we have to figure out. So each one of these slots that are cut through this object is at 45 degrees. And then the circle, which is located here, is at an angle or half of that 45 degrees, and that tells us by this 22.5. I think we have pretty much all the information, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to start with the two circles that are on the inside, the one that has a diameter of 1, and the other one that has a diameter of 1.75. So let's go ahead and create those. Circle, center diameter, let's click a location. I'll do the first one that has a diameter of 1. And let's go ahead and do the next one that has a diameter exactly at the same center as my last one, 1.75. Let's go ahead and put our gigantic circle that's on the outside here. And that one has a diameter, so circle, center, diameter at this center. And this one is 6.5. Just to check, all of these circles are right in, they are concentric to each other, because you can see that it's only one grip here in the middle. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I'm going to place a circle that's away from this center, 1.625. So I'll choose circle, center diameter. I'm going to go to the inside of this and touch, do not click on it, the center of that one. Remember, I'm going to come outside of my circle here kind of diagonally, trying to stay away from those quadrants, and then I'll rotate up. Once I have my tracking on, type in 1.625, the enter button, and then this one has a diameter. And the diameter of this circle should be 0.5. Next, I'll go ahead and create some construction lines that are horizontal, right at the quadrants of my new circle that I created. So let's go to draw, construction lines, choose horizontal, and then I'll click at this quadrant, and then at this quadrant. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up right now, so I'll go ahead and trim. And I'm going to start from the very back here, and just start walking these lines to the inside. So I'll trim, and keep trimming them forward. If I want this to go a lot faster, I can select Cutting Edge and choose this inside circle. Hit the Enter button. And now I can just trim instead of going through each one of those steps. Okay, and now I have to put another Cutting Edge because it's going to keep cutting going across here. So I'll select Cutting Edge. Take this circle and this circle. Enter, and now I should be able to trim off the rest of this. Okay. Next, let's go ahead and rotate this up 45 degrees and leave a copy. And I'm just going to do this with grips just to get us in a little bit more habit of using these. So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to select these three objects. I have to select one of these blue squares, so select it. Remember, Select the space bar once, hit the space bar again, that puts me in rotate. Then I'll choose base point, since I'll specify it to go from this center. So after you select base point, click this center, then select the word copy. Remember that we're going a counterclockwise rotation, so that's going to be positive. Type in 45, enter, and then escape. The next thing I need to do is locate that circle that's sitting out here. And we'll do that in two steps as well. So let's go back to circle, center radius. I'm going to touch this center. And then I'm going to come outside as quickly as I can, kind of at a diagonal. Now I get the tracking. 
The distance is 4.23. Enter. And then the radius of that one is 1.328. We need to rotate this circle up. And I'll just use the regular rotate command for this one. So go to rotate. Select your circle. Enter. Then I'll select the center point and tell it 22.5 is my angle. Now let's use some trimming and clean this up. So I'll go to trim. First thing I'm going to do is trim between these two points. I'll trim off my arc around here and I'm just going to keep following that back to here. Let's go ahead and trim off this portion here and trim off this portion and then escape. Okay so now we can go ahead and do the array function. Now keep in mind that some of these will overlap. If you don't want to deal with the overlap you can delete these two objects here and then you don't have to worry about the overlap happening. But in our case, I'm just going to help you use the overkill command one more time so we can help clean up our drawing. So let's go ahead and use the polar array. Select these objects on the outside. And go to enter. Now it's asking me to specify the center point. Go ahead and click the center here. We need to tell it that we have eight objects. So we have eight items. Now you can see that this is all clear. Since I'm going to use the overkill command, make sure your associativity is turned off. Go ahead and select close array. Underneath the modify tab, select the overkill command. Now last time I selected, I typed in the word all. Or you can just put a window around this. Either way would work. Once I'm done selecting and it's asking me to specify objects, I'll hit the enter button to go to the next step. In this dialog box, just hit the OK button. So once I click OK, it's going to tell me that I had 20 objects that were overlapping each other or duplicates, and it took care of that for me. Now I'll zoom in to the top portion of here. We're going to start constructing our keyway. So I'm going to create a rectangle with those dimensions. Start with the rectangle command. Specify my first point, which is here. And now I'll type in the width and the length. 1 divided by 4, comma, 3 divided by 16. Enter. Now with my rectangle, I'll go ahead and move this into position. So I'll use the move command. Select my rectangle. Enter. I want to use from this midpoint this quadrant. I'm going to zoom into here, go back to the move command, select my rectangle, then I'm going to use this as my base point, so select this end point and then come straight down to where it intersects with your circle. Zoom out, trim, and take away your arc on the circle and the line at the bottom of your rectangle, and then escape. Okay, you can just zoom in to however you want it. And thanks again for watching.